Hi friends. Um, let's talk about today's lesson. Welcome to Thursday at, at, at UFK in Ms. Godfrey's class without me here. All right, so today we're going to be continuing to work on our um, expressions and using order of operations, but also focusing on two of the major properties of math. They're called commutative property of multiplication and associative property of multiplication. So if you look at the picture right here on the top, then you can see that you kind of already know about the commutative property because your whole life for adding, you know that if you have two plus three, it's exactly the same as three plus two. You can change the order of how you do things when you're adding and you can also change the order of how you do things when you're multiplying. Three times two is the same as two times three. That's as simple as it can get. Now, we all know also that when you're dividing and when you're subtracting, the order does make a big difference. But for adding and multiplying, you can switch things around. Now, the thing about associative it's just kind of what you see in there, associate, it's who you associate with. Let's say you had a longer expression, like three plus two plus six, right? It doesn't matter whether you do the three plus two first or whether you do the two plus six first. So you can put your parentheses anywhere as long as you're just adding and it doesn't matter, you'll still get the same value for your expression. That is the same for multiplying. For multiplying, it's the associative property works exactly the same way as for adding. If I did three times two times four, right? It would be exactly the same value as if I put the parentheses around the two and the four. And you know that from doing volume, because when we did our volume unit, length times width times height, it didn't matter which order we did these. We could find the volume of a rectangular prism, whether we multiplied the height and the width, or whether we did the width and the length, it didn't matter which thing we did first. So those are our two main properties. And with that being said, let's go and take a look at our practice problems for today. All right, let's see, where did I have them? I'm going to close that out and I'm going to close this out. And then here is not the practice problems. Here they are. Sorry to keep you waiting there. All right, let's go to the solvent chair first. All right, this says Tomas, Tomas and Anaya both drew a rectangle on graph paper. Tomas's rectangle had 19 equal rows with eight in each row. Anaya's rectangle has eight equal rows with 19 in each row. Tomas thinks his rectangle has a greater area. Anaya thinks the area of both rectangles are the same. Who is correct? How can you explain about finding the area of both rectangles? And I'm not going to have you spend a whole lot of time thinking about this, but you can see that the exact same area, right, 18 times 9 or 19 times 8, it's the same rectangle just turned over to the side. So I think you'll be able to get that pretty easily. Let's try a different practice problem and see what we have. All right, this one says, Mrs. Copeland asked the class to write an expression that is equal to 36 times 42. Which student wrote an equivalent expression? Explain without finding the value of the expressions. All right, so now if you were doing this on an EOG, I would want you to find the value of each expression. But you should be able to use your properties, and that's what this problem is about, to see if um, the way you associate the numbers involved and whether you how you order them um, changes the equation. All right, so 42 times 36, we know that's right for Maya. Now Derek says 36 times 40 plus 2. All right, well, I know that the parentheses in Darren's right here tell me that 
I should do 40 plus 2 first. So that will give me 42, which then gives me 36 times 42. So Darren did it, right? He did the exact same thing that Mrs. Copeland asked him to do. All right, now let's go back and look at this. 36 times 40 and 36 times 2. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking kind of about doing an area model or the box method. And when you do that, you're just making this a little bit, um, only instead of breaking, all, breaking apart the 30 and the 6, you're keeping it together. So I'm quite certain that one would be um, the same as well. Let's see, and then the last one, 32 times 46. Tuan did not do it because all he, he totally made different numbers. He didn't use either the commutative or associative property. All right, so Maya, Darren, and Celeste are the ones that got this one right. And with that being said, I want you to start working on your practice problems over in Google Classroom.